let's talk about hydrology. So again, we have our tripartite definition of, uh, well, one of our definitions of a wetland, federal definitions is a tripartite definition, three-parted. The first part of that, hydrology. As we look down at, at uh, this lobe of the Twin Ponds here in the Conejo open space area, um, we see that we the lowest part, the, the most central part of this um, roughly oval pond has water still standing in it. We're recording this um, mid-September 2020. It's been a relatively, it, we got some good rain this past season, but it's been dry for many, many months. So as we look down, as we get closer, we can see this water is stagnant, so it's green. Um, and so that means it's been there for a while. We got a lot of algal blooms, probably have a lot of coyote and deer and other, other critters pooping in there and all that kind of good stuff leading to these algal blooms. Um, and while that might look gross to us, that's actually fantastic for things like um, red-legged tree frogs and other herps and amphibians and stuff. Um, now, in this case, this place still has water. This part of the wetland still has water. Other parts are dry. Remember that the, the um, typical number of days that we have to have to meet the federal definition is 14 days of standing water. So clearly this has been, this, this area has had water, again, we're, we're in September and it hasn't rained for months. So this area has had water for well beyond the 14 day minimum. As we look, we see that, that over time, either because of draining or evaporation or evapotranspiration as the plants take up uh, this water, um, the water level has been dropping. And uh, when we get rains, obviously the water level will go up. So wetlands can fluctuate in the amount of, um, uh, of water. The hydrology can change. We can have wetlands that accumulate only rainwater. We can have wetlands that accumulate uh, uh, water, overflowing water from rivers and things of that nature. There's a whole bunch of sources where we can get our water. In some cases, we have um, uh, artisanal, so we have, we have subsurface water that might flow into a wetland at times. In this case, this is just regular rainwater. So hydrology, that's our first part of our definition. The, uh, the next part is going to be our vegetation. Oh, actually, the next, the next would be our hydric soils. So as we look at these soils here from, you know, high above, it's hard to tell. But if we went down there and reached that and, and felt that, we would be able to see that these are these are so-called hydric soils, meaning soils that have been exposed to water for a long period of time. So if we have any, uh, say, iron in here, the iron is not going to look black. It's going to look orange because it'll be just like rust. Um, and and there, there's all kinds of other uh, characteristic uh, signals here um, when we start looking at the soil texture, et cetera. But, but one thing, it tends to be uh, the soil in the, in, underneath this water here, will the soils will tend to be anoxic. So they'll tend to be relatively reduced. They'll tend to be relatively oxygen poor and have the associated um, uh, microbial and other fungal communities um, associated with that. Now, the, the third part, the last part of our tripartite definition of what makes something a wetland is the vegetation. So if we keep uh, looking here, we, we look, we look uh, beyond, we have the water area right now, then we have the sort of uh, non-inundated uh, non soil, then we have all this vegetation. So as we look around this vegetation, as we go high, so if we look up a little bit higher, um, we'll see more terrestrial vegetation. But as we get really, as we look back down really close to the the edge, the perimeter of this pond, what we're seeing are things like cattails, typha, uh, the genus typha, um, and other reeds and sedges. So these are wetland um, uh, plants. Now, now our definition is both facultative and obligate plants. Um, facultative plants are plants that can live anywhere in a terrestrial place and also can live in a wetland setting. Obligate wetland vegetation can only live in the wetland. Um, now, if it's a salt marsh obligate, it needs, it, you know, it, it's in salty areas. If it's um, in a place like this, it's a seasonal freshwater uh, vegetation palette, etc. What makes something a facultative or an obligate wetland plant? There's a list. There's a list that's produced by the Army Corps of Engineers. And every few years, people like me, nerdy people like me get together and we, we adjust the list and we say, oh, this plant is, this plant isn't. So we have an objective list that we can turn to and say, this is or isn't. So again, the three parts of what makes, uh, what defines a wetland as far as um, we typically are concerned in the context of restoration is inundation is water, the hydrology, is uh, uh, saturated soils, uh, soils exposed to water for a long period of time, and then facultative or obligate wetland plants, vegetation. So those three things, the water, the soil, the vegetation makes uh, or, or tells us that this indeed is a wetland and uh and that's cool i like wetlands you like wetlands yeah yeah wetlands are cool okay great all right there we go